Right, so this is going to hopefully be a simple enough tutorial on using Stable Diffusion. Now, if you don't know, Stable Diffusion is basically uh, the current really popular AI art to image type. And, um, showing you sort of how to prompt it and things like that. If you need to set it up, um, I'll put a link to like a really easy to use guide, you know, that gives you all the requirements and everything on how to do it. And, you know, um, this is assuming that you've managed to install it and you're wondering sort of how it works. So I'll try and make the video relevant to the channel. We'll do stalkery sort of gas mask things of it. So we'll have a look at text to image and image to image. So text to image is where you basically give the AI prompts on what you want it to make in an image. Um, so you see here I've done Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, Clear Sky, Call of Pripyat, so the Stalker games. If you certain as it, I definitely mean like the Stalker games. And I've got man wearing a gas mask of bloody clothes. And as you can see, that's exactly what it's done for this image. So let's click generate again. And it's going to make us a new picture using my GPU. There we go, it's done that. So click generate again, it's going to make a new picture. And it's going to keep doing that. So what we can change here, sampling steps um, means that we can basically put more steps on if we want to, which means you get a better looking picture, but it's more intensive on your GPU or whatever. So if I generate now, it'll take longer to make it. Not much longer, but um, it might be a better looking image. Like saying it might be, because sometimes you can actually have uh, not many samples and it still looks like a good image. Um, where it's the sampling method, those are slightly different. Um, I think most people use the EU A one. I've played around with some of them, but I haven't found there's much difference in all of them. So I'm just changing the sample now just to show you, you know. Now that one does look a bit more like photographic, but I don't think it's necessarily that sampler anyway. Restore faces is good if you're doing it with like an actual famous person's face or whatever and you want it to look like their face and not like a weird mash up. Uh, negative prompt box is a box, so um, if something keeps appearing in your picture that you don't want to appear in it, uh, you can basically put the prompts in of the things you don't want to appear and it should hopefully get the AI not to do it. Uh, where I've got bloody close in brackets, uh, that means it emphasises it more to the AI. Clicking roll at the top will um, basically put a random artist name on there, like a dice roll, and that means that you know it'll do it in the style of an artist. So let's try that now. So let, let me put this back down to like 30, the sampling steps. So I'll just do a, one without an artist name on it. So we've got that picture. Now let's roll and Miho Hirano or something. I don't know the artist. See, but you can see now it's massively changing what the pictures look like because um, it's actually trying to emulate the style of an artist with these pictures. So there's that. There's also CFG scale. I'm not the best person to explain what this does, but basically what CFG scale does is it seems having a lower CFG means it's more accurate to what you're trying to ask it to do, and it takes less liberties of it, but often it's a very kind of weird looking picture when it's too low. CFG scale at the maximum tends, it means like the AI, I think, tends to take more liberties of what you're doing, but um, it's a bit, you know, a bit further removed from what you actually want. So most people like CFG around 10, you know, a bit under, a bit above, it's up to you, you know, play about with it. Um, but, you know, like a lot of these sliders, min-maxing them, you know, often doesn't have good results, so you want the slider sort of, you know, where you want it. Um, batches and batch sizes are basically if you want to do lots of outputs at once, like say you're running it overnight, um, we won't bother that now. Width and height are how big the output picture is. Um, seed is basically, minus one is random, um, and you can use like a number seed if you want to keep generating a thing. So let's generate another picture, and then I'll show you what image to image does. Um, I'll get one I want to actually use first. Right, let's let's go with that one. So let's do send to image to image. Now what I'm going to do now is copy all the text I had across before into the prompt. That way, and you can do that by saving it into styles, um, like reply style, create style. So we're now going to redraw the whole image. And what we're going to do now is we're going to let's put it first up to 40. And we have a thing called both. We have both the CFG scale and we have the denoising strength. The higher a denoising strength is, the more likely it is to redraw the entire image. The lower the denoising strength is, zero means it won't do anything. Um, it changes little bits about your picture. So let's say we have denoising on 0 0.5 to begin with. Let's generate um, a version of this and see what it does. 
So as you can see, it's a pretty similar picture. It just looks a bit different. So if we generate it again, as you can see, it's basically redoing the same picture on 0 0.5 and just changing bits of it. But like, you know, where the bloke's standing, the sort of background colors are all the same. So now let's um, put the denoising strength down, for example, with this particular picture. And you'll notice that it changes less per time now, basically. But if I put the denoising strength fully up to 1, we'll get a completely different picture, essentially. Although it will still use some of the bits from it. And then if we want to, we could say, send to image to image, this one. And then we can, again, mess about the CFG scales and denoising strengths. So we can, um, you know, alter this one as it is. And then if you find one of these you particularly like, you can, you know, send that to image to image and play about with that. But what we can also do is change something in this picture using the prompts if we want to. So we could have, um, let's change the artist's name now. So let's just roll with a different artist. I don't know who Leslie Vance is, but let's do that. And now let's generate some and see how it changes. So basically it's changing the art style a bit. So now we've got a more realistic looking one, I'd say there. Let's send this one to images, and then again we could go off of this one. Now what we could do with this, for example, that's quite a good one, is let's send this one to image to image. Let's say we wanted to get rid of the hose, so we put hose in the negative box, and then generate again. And it's still done it this time, but we'll see if it can get rid of it. If I need to, I'll put some brackets around it, so yeah. Let's put hose into brackets. Generate, and let's see if it gets rid of the hose on its gas mask now. Again, we're, at, we're assuming that the AI knows that that's a hose, though. This is the problem. Because if it just thinks the gas mask hose is a bit of the gas mask. See, there it's turned it into a strap. That's quite good. Um, but yeah, so th that's what um, that basically does. But what we could also do, for example, is say put helmet in there. And then let's see if it doesn't give him a helmet. Where it like changes that bit around a bit. And again, I can put the denoising strength up a bit to more radically change it. Yeah, that's a bit more radically changed, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I uh, wasn't expecting that one. Um, that actually looks like a screenshot. <laughs> um, yeah, so some of these are weird. Um, but yeah, so like I said, the CFG scale will affect it a bit as well. Let's take the helmet bit out and just generate again. So yeah, let me put the CFG scale down to about 0 0.3, so it's not going to change the pictures too radically. Then let's mess about with the CFG scale, so hopefully give you a sort of an idea of what that does. So as you can see, on 30 it looks a bit more pop arty. I don't know if that's what it's trying to do. But, um, like that. And then if we put, say, the CFG scale down to 2 and start generating pictures again, it's going to change it more to what looks like a very sort of bland sketch. So, again, most people like the CFG, I think, between about 7 and 9, from what I've read on a lot of forums where people play about with this. But yeah, so what we could also do is we could change, say, um, the thing. So we could say... Um, fire in background, for example, at the top. Now we can click generate, and it should start putting fires into the background after a few uh, things. Hopefully, anyway. It's a better image. I'll send that one to the thing. But that wasn't exactly what I was going for. But let me put the denoising strength up a bit and see if that will encourage the fire to be in the background. Is that turning him into a fireman now? Looks like it's now more trying to turn him into a fireman himself. But, um, so again, this is the thing when... Yeah, see, it's put fire in that guy's helmet there. Um, we could also put more brackets around that and then turn the denoising strength down. Bear it in mind, though, if you put too many... There we go, we're getting a bit of fire in the background now. Bear in mind, if you put too ma many brackets around something, and I'll see if I can demonstrate this, it might mess your picture up. Um... So that's quite a good one. So let's have this as our picture, but now we're firing background, let's put shitloads of um, 
these around it. Just to show you how that's going to mess it up. See? It's now um, doing something very bizarre like this. Because we've just it's emphasising the fire just too much. So let's take a load of those commas off of it. So yeah. It's obviously, like I said, it's one of those things you mess about with it. The more you mess about with it, the more you learn using a program like this. Um, but as I said, it's, um, it's, it's a useful tool. You can use it for loads of stuff. Um, one of the most popular uses for it at the moment, obviously, is porn. Um, <laughs> that's actually a very popular use of this program. But, um, yeah, you can, you can do a lot of stuff with this. So just to go back to, say, text to image, we could do something that's completely not stalker, just to quickly show you. So we could do, say, um, let's roll an artist name. I just want to see first if I roll an uh, artist name and nothing on it, what sort of art they do. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get an artist name I recognise. So I thought earlier on I had somebody like... Um, what was it? Um, like a really famous artist up there, um, like Constable or somebody. I think it was a Constable I had up there. Okay, so let's let's do this guy because he looks like he does sci-fi art. Michael Elton. All right. Okay. So this cool, cool. This looks guy does like he looks like he does stuff. Stalker art. So let's do now um, cityscape traffic pedestrians or something like that. And see now you're getting. Um, quite cool things where it's making um, something in the style of this artist essentially if they were to do a picture like that and again change the CFG scale and it will change what it's generating sort of slightly but there you go so like I said this is a really cool program there's lots and lots of like more in-depth things you can do with this. But, um... Let's put loads of artist names on for a laugh. Like I said, it's, um... You know, if you've got a decent GPU, this is a very fun program to mess about with.